Hey, it's Jared, and in this video I'm going to prove to you that pet stains and odors are not your fault. Because just like in gambling, you're playing against a stack deck, and unless you know the secrets that only the insiders know, and use to consistently win, the house is going to beat you every single time. By the end of this video, you'll know the 7 insider secrets that are required to beat the house at its own game. You'll have a crystal clear understanding of why the things you tried in the past didn't work, and you know what to look for from here on forward when selecting a solution for your pet stains and odors. That's my wife, our two dogs, Zeus and Zora and I, in our engagement picture. At the time of the picture, Zora, the one on the right, was about six months old. Just like with kids, sometimes you're blessed with a problem child. Well, Zora was our little problem child. In this video, I'll share with you how when Zora was a puppy and was scared to go outside, I started to uncover the truth about the pet stain and odor removal products I was trying. I was doing my best to keep her accidents from destroying our carpet, rugs, couch, and the many other delightfully creative places she found to surprise us with an accident, and it was a losing battle. Zora's accidents were so frustrating. I would just get home from a long day and wanted to relax for a second. I'd try to take Zora out, but she'd get scared and run back inside. Then five to ten minutes later, I'd step in a wet spot, or smell something so unmistakably sweet that she had been so kind to leave me on the carpet. I couldn't just leave the pee or poop there, so I'd go into the kitchen, grab a roll of paper towels and a bottle of the Flavor of the Week pet stain product and spray it on. There I was exhausted after work, trying to control my anger at poor Zora and trying to blot up as much of her accident as possible before spraying the Cross Your Fingers This One Works pet stain product. I always had a feeling that what I was doing was in vain, but good enough for now would have to do. This was until spring rolled around and it started to get hot here in Texas. My house started to smell like, pardon the French, but a piss sauna. Every room I went into, all I could smell was pee. Where was it coming from? By this time months later, Zora was getting more and more confident outside, and we were hardly having any more accidents in the house anymore. But the smell seemed to be getting worse and worse, and we couldn't find anything to help with the problem. So we resorted to trying to cover up the smell with air fresheners and candles. Thank God that the default gift for women, who don't know what to get each other, seems to be candles. We literally had a shelf in our kitchen cabinet full of assorted candles that we had never lit. This was until the summer of the piss sauna, so we took all the candles we could find and spread them all around our humble abode. Our house smelled like Santa's workshop. We had gingerbread, pine, cupcake, lavender, and who could forget the lovely eggnog candle, all working together to mask the urine smell. This was never going to work. So I set out to the internet to find a solution. That turned out to be even more exciting. There were all these products that looked like someone had mixed them up in their basement and slapped up a website. There were dozens, if not hundreds of different home remedies. The one I remember most was something like, pour a box of baking soda on the fresh urine accident, really press the baking soda into the carpet and let it absorb the urine. Finally, vacuum up all the baking soda. That sounded like it might work in theory, but one, my stains were drying up. Two, there are urine areas everywhere. And three, to be honest, that sounded like a lot of work. I mean, when I get home and stumble upon an accident, the last thing I want to do is pour, press, and then get the vacuum out. I was at a loss for what to do, besides A, call a carpet cleaner, or B, replace the carpet. It was about that time I got to thinking. I had a family acquaintance who used to be in the carpet cleaning and dyeing business years ago, but who had gotten out of it. So I called and set up lunch with him to go talk to him about the problems I was having. There I was a few weeks later, sitting with an ex-carpet cleaner at a restaurant, trying to get all my questions answered about Zora's stains and odors. We chit-chatted for a while, then I really started to ask him the questions that were on my mind. He looked up from his plate, sat back, and started talking about how he started cleaning carpets. He told all about the nasty stuff he experienced while cleaning carpets, and he told how people would call him with $20,000 Oriental rugs that their pets had had accidents on. It was when he was talking about the expensive Oriental rugs that his demeanor started to change. He started to lean forward when he spoke to me, and his voice tone changed. That's when he really started to open up and come clean with the insider secrets that no one really knew about pet stains and odors in particular. 